Hi, welcome to 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright. I am so glad that you stopped through today. And um, let's just get right into what we're going to be talking about. And that is God's word on God is speaking to you. You know, uh, but let me just remind you that you can get all the scriptures that I am going to be going over in the description box. So take a look at that. There are some resources for you there that you can uh, look up these scriptures yourself. You can look at the ones that I have selected and um, just have your own time of meditation and spending some time with God and seeing what he is saying to you through the scriptures. And of course, last week we talked about the fact that when you speak to the universe, you're actually speaking to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, because according to the Bible, which I believe, as it is written, that Jesus Christ is the creator of our world. He's the creator of our universe. So, you know, dig around and take a look in the Bible and see what you think after you take a look and uh, come across some of the scriptures that I have presented to you. And once again, uh, this inspirational Tuesday talk is the result of needing to, wanting to gather some of the elders in my elder complex to remind us of the fact that even though we are getting older, doesn't mean that life has to stop, that we have to continue to grow and flourish. And as a matter of fact, it says in Psalm 92 and 14, that even in your old age, God causes you to prosper and be fruitful. And so if God has that uh, ability to make us do great things, why don't we get in alignment with it and join with him and being prosperous and fruitful. Let's make the most of our times and not just uh, sit back in a corner. And just because we're not the CEO of that major corporation anymore, uh, just stop living and doing. There's a lot of things you can you can do. You should become um, CEO emeritus of whatever endeavors um, that you were involved in. So thanks once again for stopping through. My name is Jackie Wright. And um, you can email me to get um, some of the uh, correspondence around uh, these talks by emailing by emailing uh, 30 minutes to success at gmail.com. That's three zero minutes to success at gmail.com. So thank you so very much. I have my tea with me and just gonna relax for a few minutes as, I chat with you and hopefully, you know, why don't you um, get yourself a cup of tea or, or what your, uh, whatever your favorite beverage uh, is. It's just nothing like having a hot beverage, especially in the kind of day that I'm having here where there is um, rain and there's rain that is hitting on the window. And I love that sound. Uh, I know Ann Peebles had this song that I can't stand the rain on my window, bringing back sweet memories. But for me, I love the sound of rain. And uh, it's just, um, it's not as glorious as that sunshine, but I tell you what, it has its place and it makes a difference, uh, kind of quiets things down, kind of makes you be a little bit more reflective. And so I like those rainy days and I like rain on my window, but Let's see what I can get on my screen right away so that we can just uh, get right into the scriptures of what we're going to be talking about. So thank you for forbearance uh, with me as I uh, get this all lined up. So once again, uh, today's topic is God is speaking to you. And one of the things that we have here are the resources that I said you can find in the description box. So please go ahead and take a look at the various uh, things. Now it's interesting, um, this one right here says six ways God speaks, and this says 12 ways God speaks uh, for you to uh, take into consideration. But in my PowerPoint, I have just chosen three ways that I think are the most obvious of how God speaks to us, and that is through his words, circumstances, and people. People have a way of being able to give us 
messages. And sometimes it's the people in the circumstances giving us messages. Now, um, today we are going to be going over scripture in the English Standard Version. So I also provided you a link so that you could find out a little bit, bit more about that because most people are probably familiar with the King James Version or the New International Version. And there's so many other um, uh, versions like the Phillips Bible and just a number of, of versions that are out there. So uh, a good resource for you would be to go to BibleGateway.com. That's BibleGateway.com. And you can see all the various uh, versions uh, that there are in the Bible. And um, the other things um, that you have is at that resource is the uh, audio version of the Bible. So you have different versions of the audio version uh, that you can lis listen to and different people that are reading um, the word. It's just such a beautiful resource, but let's dig right in. Hebrews 1, 1 through 2 says, long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. There it is right there off the bat. Jesus created the world. So we have the um, creator of the universe that we can speak to. So we just thank God for it that opportunity that every day, throughout the day, we can be able to uh, speak to the one who created the universe, who created us. And the thing of it is what we're talking about today is that he speaks to us. So in Isaiah 1, 18, it says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. All right, white as snow, like wool. That's wonderful. What I love about this is uh, the fact that um, if we come together and reason with God, if we not only talk to him, but he talks back to us, we reason together, then the things that are an error in our life can be corrected. And so there it is right there. The, one of the results of, the, of, of speaking to God is the fact that um, our sins, although as scarlet, they become as white as snow. So things change when God speaks to you. And when you act on what he um, speaks to you about, life changes. And it always changes for the better because he's the one that created life and has given us instructions and warnings about certain things so that we can have a uh, fruitful life. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, all scriptures breathe out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So that's another thing. It's like uh, we said that God speaks through us through his word. And here we have affirmed right here in 2 uh, Timothy 3.16 that uh, it is profitable for us uh, to hear the word of God and to uh, respond to it when we are um, reproof, reproved rather, and um, when we are corrected and when we allow ourselves to be trained, and that's the best way to be trained in the beginning. So you don't get off the, uh, onto the wrong foot or off to the wrong path and get that information and just walk that straight line uh, as God would instruct you. And God never uh, gives us instructions to deny us, but he gives us instruction to increase um, those gifts and blessings that we uh, could receive. So um, there it is, the purpose of listening to God, his word that, you know, we'll be trained. Uh, if we do get off on the wrong foot, if we do get off in error, uh, then we can be corrected and then put back on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, indeed. And then Let's look at this other script, the, the next scripture that I, I want to look at is John 10, 
27 through 28, it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Wow, that is uh, one of the benefits of listening to the voice of God, knowing God. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, I give them eternal life. And truly he does because the word of God says, for those uh, who believe in him shall not perish, but they shall have everlasting life, as it says in John 3, 16. And John, um, I put that, that down there uh, twice. I guess I was really um, you know, impressed by that scripture. But in Romans 10, 17, it says, so faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So if we listen to the word of Christ, the words of Christ, uh, then we are going to be increasing our faith. And that's one of the things uh, that's good uh, for us to pause and listen to what God is saying to us uh, so that we can increase our faith. And of course, um, with faith, we can do more. And I, I often think about a word, what Jesus said that, and these things you shall do, you shall do more than these things. And what were the kinds of things that Jesus did? He raised the dead, he healed the sick, he did um, things to heal people's bodies, he deal, did things to heal people's spirits and minds, he cast out devils. He did a lot of great things and he said, greater things than these ye shall do. So we need to get in that word of God so that we can be equipped, built up so that we can do greater things. In Hebrews 4, uh, 12, it says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Wow, that is amazing. So God's word is alive and it's doing things. And so when we uh, read that word and we meditate on that word, um, there are things happening in us, happening in our bodies. There are things happening in the, the atmosphere as we speak the word of God and everything. And there's a, a scripture and I don't think I chose it, um, it's from Isaiah that basically says that when God sends forth his word, it's going to accomplish what he has in mind and it's not going to come back void. And I believe that's in Isaiah 58, but, you know, Google my, the words and find it. God's word does not come back to him void. So when you're depending on that word, when you're listening because he's speaking to you on that word, in that word, um, you're going to have some great and mighty things happen as you move forward in that word. In Jeremiah 33 and 3, it says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Wow. I just thought of it. Uh, there was a situation once where I just had a fleeting thought, but it was one of the most fascinating <laughs> magnificent little small big things that ever happened to me. I was thinking about the name Jemima. Jemima, Jemima. You know, uh, growing up um, when somebody called you an Aunt Jemima, it was kind of a negative thing uh, in the Black community in the Jim Crow era that I grew up. But I always liked the sound of Jemima. And of course, you know, I would um, have my little uh, response back to the little uh, mean girls or boys that uh, said something like that to me, uh, because I just felt that uh, Aunt Jemima, frankly, was very noble. She was uh, making pancakes and making money. So um, it was okay to look like Aunt Jemima as far as I was concerned, because um, she was accomplishing some things. So I was, uh, you know, thinking about that name, how lyrical it was, and it just was really beautiful. It was too bad that people thought of it in a negative way. And so just a few days later, I happened to open my Bible. Wow, I'm striking on something very positive here. I can hear from the, <laughs> the uh, lightning in the sky. 
I opened my Bible to the book of Job and there it is in the last chapter, Jemima uh, was one of the daughters of Job. And of course they were noble women. And so there it was uh, firm for me. I didn't know where the name came from or anything like that, but that little musing that I had and God answered that uh, for me. And I wasn't making a direct call. I was just kind of thinking, oh, I wonder where the name came from. It's so beautiful sounding. And, you know, it's it should represent something good. And then sure enough, it did represent something good, uh, Job's daughter. And it's just so wonderful. It was when Job was blessed in his latter days uh, that um, it is mentioned about his daughters. And the daughters all got an inheritance indication that uh, women should be treated equally like men. Uh, and there are so many instances where Christianity has made a difference in the, um, the position of women um, throughout the ages. So anyway, that's just a little something about call unto me and I will answer you. That's a uh, kind of a small thing, but in a way it was a big thing that God was even interested in my small little thought about the name of a of a, of a woman that I like the lyrics, the lyrical sound to it and everything. And it's like, oh, a way of communicating with me. I thought it was just very sweet and nice. I hope you think so too. Going on, Isaiah 56 and one through 12, it says, thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it and keeps his hand from doing evil. Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And let not the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Now, remember, God's word is not void and it, it is alive and it's going to produce what it says. And in that scripture, uh, I see a couple of things where uh, I see people who can't produce. And God says, don't worry about it. You're going to produce. And then also you see people who are are foreigners. It seems as if they would be left out, but God doesn't leave uh, the foreigners out. And I just love it uh, when you look into at the scriptures where it talks about how um, foreigners should be treated well as you look in the Old, um, Old Testament. And in that being that God is concerned even for um, people who um, are thought of as worthless, they can't produce, they are, are from a foreign land or various things that um, people have, ideas they have. God cares for them. And I think especially when it comes to foreigners, what's going on at uh, our borders, uh, at the border uh, between Mexico and Texas and, and all that's happened and transpired with that is that we need to be very careful because we're dealing with God's creation as we're dealing with human beings. And so uh, we need to walk in the truth. And how do we find out the truth? We need to listen to what God is saying as he is speaking to us about various things. And so I chose a few uh, scriptures that talked about God speaking to us and his word, uh, but there's so much more. Let us not be uh, hard headed. Um, you know, my mother used to say growing up, when we were growing up, uh, a hard head makes for a soft behind. Um, meaning uh, basically there are uh, things that happen 
to you. You get hurt when you don't listen, when you don't follow uh, what should be done. And it's, it's just pointed out there very clearly for us to, to um, do righteousness, keep justice. There it is, plain as day, as we do unto others as they would have do unto us, do unto others as we would have them do unto us, then uh, this life would be so much better. If we didn't lie, cheat, and steal, um, covet after our neighbor's um, spouse, how much better our lives would be. So the word of God has everything that we need in order to be successful in this life. And it's just a matter of listening. And the fact that you have stopped through um, means that um, God is speaking to you too. And so I really appreciate you taking the time and, um, you know, listening with me uh, to what God is saying through his word. And it was kind of interesting. Um, I had mentioned earlier about it raining and then to hear uh, the sound effects um, that God gave throughout this uh, conversation. I don't, I don't know how clearly it came through um, and everything, but hopefully you enjoy that too. There's nothing like the sound of rain. It's nothing like um, the strikes of God that I hear that come from the sky that reminds me that I'm not in control. He's in control. And I just remind you of that, that he is in control. And as I said earlier last week, we've talked about the fact that when you speak to the universe, you are speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ, the creator. So why not speak to him directly? Why not use his name? Why not call upon him? And the word of God says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved, you and your whole household for that matter. So um, don't just take my word for it. But um, take these uh, few scriptures that I've provided, take a look at it and just ask, is this so? Just like I asked, where did that name come from? It's so lyrical sounding. And God provided me the answer in just a few days. And he used his word to do so. So I just want to encourage you today to have the great rest of your day, evening, night, whatever time you're stopping through. Um, the, have a great rest of the week and this month and uh, this year and have a great rest of your life. And I just thank you once again for stopping through for 30 Minutes to Success, Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright, and you can find out more information by looking at the scripture. So thank you so very much. I, I appreciate your stopping through once again. God bless you and uh, listen up. See what God is saying to you.